Okay, today's lecture is uh, going to be on taking your idea. Now we've, we've pitched ideas, we've developed ideas. Now we're gonna take your idea, we're gonna see if we can actually turn it into a movie, meaning we're gonna actually see if we can create scenes with your idea. And this is really essential um, to determine if this idea is ready to write right now. And what it is, it's essentially, it's almost like a test. How well do you know these characters? How well do you know the, this world? And I want you to take this very serious over the next really week to two weeks and see, can you come up with an outline? Can you come up with an outline that allows you to show me the, not all of the scenes, but the most significant scenes in your story? This is really a, a massive step forward in, in determining whether you're ready to write the story right now. Um, the pitches, you know, is pitching and creating a synopsis and or a treatment is one thing, um, but actually writing your, your, selecting your scenes and letting me know you're ready to, to uh, write your story is another thing. So I'm going to do a, a screen share and so I'm going to go through this and we're going to, again, I'm going to go through what a scene list is, what an outline is. Um, and, and where scenes go, what I'm looking for. I'm going to give you an example of, of an outline, and then we're going to begin to talk about three-act structure, and then we will go in more depth in three-act structure and another review on um, um, checking your story. So I'm going to do a screen share, and here we are. Okay, so this is the lecture that, that, that we're primarily hitting today. It's choosing your scenes, creating the step outline. What is a step outline? This is a step outline. The movie Clerks um, by Kevin Smith, right, um, was uh, uh, in an indie hit in the in the um, in the '90s, and it was a, a career launcher. And it's one of those. It's a coming of age story. It's a simple story, and we've we've talked about it. You know, it's a it's a basically it was Kevin Smith's breakthrough movie, right? And it's about two convenience store clerks, um, Dante Hicks and Randall Graves, right? bored out of their minds, right? And it says oh, they're serving nonstop shoppers. They're overworked. They play hockey. They visit a funeral home and deal with their offbeat love lives. And that's the key to the story. Coming up with the scenes that reflect how they deal with their off, offbeat love lives. This is, if you have your synopsis, it's not always enough, right? In addition to coming up with your six characters, can you do this? Can you create a list of at least 30 scenes that have writable scenes, right? That have writable scenes. The first scene is Dante, he's our hero. And he's the one who's got to decide which girl he's going to end up with. He's gonna make the wrong choice, right? But the first scene is really a simple scene. Dante's boss convinces him to cover a shift. He's not supposed to be at work today. It's his day off, he comes in. That's a sip. Dante's boss convinces him to cover a shift, right? And then we go down and all 37 of these scenes tell our 90 plus minute story. This is what I want you to do. I want you to be able to take your paragraph, whatever your paragraph is that you've sent to me, and I want you to be able to do this, right? I want you to be able to do this. Give me a list of proposed scenes. And I'm going to say this again, proposed scenes. Not These might not actually be the scenes, but by giving me a list of proposed scenes, we are checking to see, do you have what it takes to challenge your characters set up your characters, make us care about your characters and take us through the story. This is what it is. And, and just by doing this exercise, whether you're writing a feature film, a short film or whatever film, this exercise gives you an idea of how much more work you need to do on this story, how much more you need to know about these characters, how much more you need to know about this world. Now, those of you doing these types of stories, the Clerks, Napoleon Dynamite, Sunshine, the coming of age stories, the, the follow your dream stories, or the family and dysfunction stories that are personal stories to you, this should be a pretty easy process. But a lot of students in this class and a lot of students who are developing stories, who are continuing, who, um, who, who might not quite have worlds and characters development need to go through this test. And I believe before you attempt to do this, the best thing to do is to find a screenplay. I'm gonna give you some advice now. This is advice that was given to me and I'm gonna, re I'm gonna repeat it to you. Um, you need to read screenplays. The, the way that you learn how to write screenplays is by listening to me and I will give you all of the step-by-step 
sort of principles and processes that you need to create a screenplay, to, to, to create a, a world and characters that tell a story. Um, but you really need to see what other screenplays are like and to read other screenplays and to examine how screenplays work because they're very, very different. A screenplay is very different than a novel. Let me actually um, um, grab a scene for you guys as, as I'm going here. Um, I'm gonna slow down for a second here. Um, let me go to um, scripts. Here's a script that I actually uh, wrote, right? Um, script that I wrote um, called Wish You Was Eight. Um, the brief pitch is a, a, an eight-year-old um, boy um, his father is dying of cancer. His father had uh, his father's um, his father's own father had uh, perished in a tragic plane accident um, based on a real story about a musician who jammed with John Lennon and David Bowie. And um, the the father living in today in 2022 can't um, deal um, with with the past and has to develop cancer. And, but, but seems to talk about how glorious it was of what his father had done, you know, working with these, these, with David Bowie and John Lennon and being a studio musician. And this, and as a child, um, this father remembers, he's telling stories about his father, um, but he's not living in the moment, he's living in the past. And he, and he has a very severe case of cancer. Um, and the kid makes a wish um, that he wishes that he knew his father when he was also eight. And then what happens? Father comes back, um, you know, like in a big comes back and they're dealing with an eight year old boy who does, does not, there's the fish out of water, does not know where he is. And it's not a novel. You can see, right. It's, it's very light, right. It's very I many, not like the story, but there's not much on the page, right. Even when there's not much dialogue, it's spaced out. There's not much to a screenplay, right? When you see it, it's like, here's no dialogue, but it's 1977 and Cadillac, right? Um, with white gold plating trim, pulls up to the Dakota, the 72nd and Central Park West. That's where Lennon lived, right? Young James eight, you know, his father Lou, a mid forties with a glow only rock stars have, and his mother Suzanne emerge. Young James carries his dad's electric guitar. We get into the jam session with John Lennon, right? All this is all based on true story. I morphed it, you know, with 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 uh, you know with with a reality and fused a couple stories together. But you can see. It just goes along. It goes along. Now, are there screenplays that influence this screenplay? Absolutely. You know, almost famous probably would be would be one of them, right? Period pieces like that. Point being for, for you guys that you're not gonna be able to write something like that until you read other screenplays like that. You need to really read hundreds and hundreds of screenplays in order to write a screenplay, right? So I want you to go out and actively find screenplays that will help you write your screenplay, right? So if any of these stories that I've told you resonate with you, whether it's Napoleon Dynamite, Sunshine, um, Swingers, Wedding, Days and Confused, Graffiti, Juno, Superbad, Fruitvale Station, um, and, and you think thematically, character, tonally, that, that they might help you write your screenplay, you should read them. The most important thing in order to become a screenwriter is to, is to look at and to read screenplays. It's, it's even more important than what I'm telling you. If you just immerse yourself into what a screenplay is, because again, showing you what I showed you in the screenplay that I pulled up, there's not much there on the page. It's a very different medium. It's a very surface medium. We, we hear what people say, we see what they do. It's not like writing a novel, right? And in order, before you write a screenplay though, you need to do this. You need to come up with a list of scenes. And this list of scenes, believe it or not, is a movie with a beginning, middle, and end, right? The step outline, this is a step outline. It's also called the scene list. It's also called the beat sheet. The step outline will allow you to write your script. This is a plan for writing your scenes. So as you're sitting here and I'm going through this lecture and you're listening to it right now, ask yourself, can you come up with scenes? That's the point of this. I'm gonna, the first part of this is gonna be to let you know exactly what the outline is and what the elements of the outline contain 
But more importantly, right, can you picture the scenes in your movie now? Can you picture the big scenes in your movie? And I, I know we did this during the pitch, right? As we said, check in your story. This is really more than checking your story. This is, can you put scenes down on paper that you will write? Now realize, as you go one through 37, as you write, this is a plan to write. As you write scenes and characters begin to walk, talk and act and go after what they want and what they need and what they think they need, um, more scenes will come to you, more motivations will come to you. And generally the process will be whatever story you wanna write for me, that your next major assignment after you send me your synopsis and your character list will be shh, give me your scene list give me your proposed scene list give me your step outline so i can see that you have a setup you have complications that that rise and 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 challenge your characters and that there's a resolution right i don't want all the scenes but i want to see the movie right now a treatment what is a treatment a treatment is a complete summary of your movie right you don't need to write a treatment although if you're having problems coming up with an outline a complete outline um, for your movie um, a treatment might be good what is a treatment summarize what's in the first act summarize what's in the second act summarize what's in the third act it's the tell, tell us your story, right? It's not writing your story, it's the tell us your story. So, and I know a lot of people in this class have gone beyond your synopsis and you've, and you've given me, you've summarized, you've told me what your first act is. You've told me what your characters need, what they want and why they want it and why they decide to go after it. And then you, in the second act, you tell me what it is that they're after, who is in the way of, of what they want, and you summarize major incidences along the way, and, and you the, the hardest part, the decisions, the major tests, you give me this summary, right? And I would, I would keep it simple if you're gonna do a treatment. I would give me one paragraph, which reflects the beginning of your story, the first half of your second act, I would give it all the way up to the midpoint and you'll understand what I'm talking about after we finish this lecture today. And then I give you the second half of the second act and then the third act. So four paragraphs or so four sections of just telling me the major steps of your story. But if by telling me the major steps of your story is not enough to write your story. And this is a this is a class and a lesson on how to write a screenplay, not how to tell me a screenplay. Telling me your screenplay, right, is important because it gets me excited about it. But it's not gonna help you write it. That's why we are creating this outline, right? We are, uh, we're creating the map or your hero's journey, right? And the key, this is the first thing we talked about. All of these lectures that we talked about were um, creating your spine. And again, you know what your spine is. This map here sticks to your spine. And what is your spine? It's what your story is about. What's your hook, right? In the first scene to 10 scenes, I'm going to figure out, wow, this is an action comedy. This is a Western, right? This is an animated comedy. This is a, a coming of age. This is a family drama, right? What is it? And in the first, you know, five scenes, I'm going to know who my hero, the protagonist, the person we care about is. And, and by the end of your first act, 10 scenes, maybe 15, we're going to know what the goal is. And the goal is what your story really is. It's in here, it's Dante has to decide which girl he wants, right? And uh, Napoleon Dynamite, Napoleon is trying to win the election, the goal to get the girl. Sunshine, dad is trying to get to Sunshine in order to get his book deal and to financially save the save the save the family right we're going to know after the first act what it is we are about right what is it we are about greek wedding the non-greek we're going to marry try to convince dad that i can that 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 uh nia can marry someone out of her greek culture right dazed and confused after the setup we're going to know that we have we have one night to determine is uh randall going to sign the pledge right all of, all of these things get set up right so and and it's really reflected here it's simply here so i can glance at a list of proposed scenes now it would be great if you can get your each scene down to one active sentence i most of you won't be able to do it but 
by trying, and this is what today's lecture is about, by trying to get your scenes down as simple as possible on the page, then you will expand them, right? Then you will expand them, right? And then in this, in this, in this outline reflects the need, what the characters need to change in Sunshine. Dad needs to let go of his lecturing ways and become a real father who actually has compassion and cares about his family. Um, and in, in this, by the time we get out of the first act and we resolve that we're going to figure out is this a problem or a villain story, right? If it's a problem story, like Clerks, he has a problem, right? He's got to decide which girl to be with, right? There's not an antagonist here, right? But I need this needs to be reflected here. And by, by you doing this and sending me this list of scenes, I will be able to begin to collaborate with you, be, begin to give you development notes, right? So we get beyond the pitch. And this is, we can actually start talking about your story. This document, this simple document, the outline allows us to have a conversation, allows me to give you notes. Hey, you know what? You need more complications in your first act. Oh, your second act is just way too easy in the beginning. We need to, we need to raise the stakes quicker, right? We can start having this dialogue for you. The outline, if you can get through it, will let you know, can you write this? You know, because what the goal is to have at least 30 scenes. And I'll, and I'll tell you why, why you need 30 scenes. And, and well, I'm going to get there, right? But you need at least 30 scenes. And if you can't come up with 30 scenes for a feature, you won't be able to write a feature. And, and if you can't come up with um, 20 scenes for a pilot, you're not going to be able to write your pilot. If you can't come up with three to five scenes for the short, you know, that have the beginning, middle and end, you're not gonna be able to write the short, right? The, the outlining, right? The outlining is key. And what does outlining do for you, right? You're thinking about not all of the scenes, the most important scenes, right? And it allows you to see your story to cut unnecessary scenes before you actually write them. Because what you're gonna do, the, the, the typical person who's never taken a screenwriting class, who's read a screenplay, and decides they're going to dive in and he doesn't prepare a scene list or an outline, that person will just jump in and they will set up, set up, set up, set up. And they will write a 40 to 60 page first act. And it'll be mushy, right? And you'll have scenes that are repetitive. This is where we find out that my protagonist wants father not to die of cancer. And we'll find out that he has the same conversation with sister, mother, and grandfather. You know what? That's repetitive. We need to cut that down and come up with the one good scene. And that is what the outlining will allow you to do. You'll be able to look at it, right? And look at the major turning points, the major turning points, right? And decide how important are these scenes, right? And you'll cut unnecessary scenes before you write them, right? When you get a, an outline here, right? This is the hardest part of screenwriting, getting this outline from beginning, middle, and end, because there's no such thing as writer's block once you have an outline. That means we know that we're going from scene one to scene two to scene three. And again, this is a map. You might decide that there's an unnecessary scene between three and four, or that four is not necessary, but at least you're going forward. You're always writing forward. The, the work that you spend on your outline is work that allows you to write your movie, write the actual scenes. And then when I show you how to write a scene, that screenplay that I showed you earlier, the one that I wrote, but you, 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 any, any screenplay that you get your hands on and look at, you're going to be surprised at how little there is on that page, how little there is on that page. There's not much on that page, which is was shocking to me, you know, that a screenplay is not every shot. I, um, when I started writing, I, I started writing short stories, ended up writing plays. And then I had someone say, well, why don't you write a screenplay? And I just couldn't imagine how you could write a screenplay. How do you know when the camera is on um, a wide, a close, a medium? How do you write? I thought that's what screenwriting was. Screenwriting is not that. Screenwriting is just writing the general action, you know, the general action. It's the, it's, it's very, it's a plan for a scene that a director will layer everything else in, right? And so what I'm asking you to do before you write this, and it's, it's the easiest, most accessible form of creative writing, because it's just a plan for the scene, right? But what you're creating here is a plan to write a scene, 
right? A plan to write a scene. That's all that I'm asking you to do, right? All, all I'm asking you to do is, right, you know, um, to come up with a plan, Dante's boss convinces him to cover a ship. That scene is three or four pages, right? Just one sentence here. Dante fails to open the window shutters and resorts to using a sheet for a sign. An activist convinces a customer to buy gum instead of cigarettes. These are the conflicts that happens before Veronica, the, the love interest shows up, right? It, it's building to Veronica, um, the inciting incident showing up, right? Um, now, you should be thinking about your scenes and you should be thinking, okay, what does Barnaby um, want me? How many scenes do we need, right? And this is, this is not a math class, but this is sort of the test, right? You should come up with steps right here that reflect the beginning, middle, and end of your story. 30 minimum, right? 30 to 50. I, I would like more than 30, but if you're writing an indie film, you might be able to come up with, you know, 30, 30 scenes. If you can't come up with 30 scenes, you will not be able to write a feature film. I'm telling you right now. And the 30 scenes aren't the 31st scene, the 30 like scenes one through 30, and you're still only halfway through your second act, right? You, I want 30 scenes that reflect the entire film. Now, there's no rule that there's 30 scenes in a movie. This is the 30 is the minimum that I want, right? And most first time writers will come up between 30 and 50 for a feature film, right? And let me tell you, or 20 for a 60 minute pilot, 10 for a 30 minute episode. And let me tell you, there's a logic behind this, right? Here's the basic logic for a minimum amount of steps before you begin writing scenes. And again, the minimum amount of steps before writing scenes, right? Each each step will equal roughly, or each outline will, will equal roughly um, two to five um, pages, right? Two to five pages in a script, right? It's gonna read two to five pages in a script. And let's say that's an average of three pages, right? If each scene is roughly th three pages uh, of the script, believe it or not, a script times out, times out more or less a minute per page. Now, dialogue heavy scenes, right? Pages are, are shorter. Action, right? Tend to be longer. But let's just say for an average, 90, you know, a, a, a page a minute, right? So that means a minimum you will need for a feature film is 90 minutes, right? So 90 pages is what we're shooting for. And that's what the 30 scenes, that's your 30 scene check, right? And Clerks is roughly a 90-ish minute movie. We've got 37 scenes listed here, you know, that are in the screenplay, right? 30, 37 scenes listed in the screenplay. So logically, I'm looking for you to come up with, right? I'm looking for you to come up with 30 scenes, right? And if you can't come up with 30 scenes that reflect beginning, middle, and end, that's all I'm going to talk about for the, for the rest of this class and for the next class is what a beginning, the middle, and end is, right? If you can't come up with scenes that reflect the beginning, middle, and end, you're not ready to write this idea. It doesn't mean this idea is not a good idea. It just means that you're not quite ready to write this idea. Now, let me talk about what a step is, right? A step is not a scene. It's the foundation for a scene, right? A scene contains dialogue and action. You know, let me pull up, let me pull up another scene. Um, a, a scene contains dialogue and action, right? Um, let me grab a... Uh, Another scene, one. Uh, let me see where is it. Give me one sec. I will. I just want to pull up. Um, I think it's under. Here we go. This is a DreamWorks file that I have um, that has DreamWorks scenes. There we go. Um, so these are scenes that I actually like to use when I'm when I'm teaching scene writing. Um, and I will let's go with the Lady Bird, um, which is a great great movie. Um, Lady Bird opening scene, right? that this this scene is exactly what i'm talking about there see there's nothing this is the first scene right the first scene starts here in a hotel 
right? And it gets into a car and it ends right here, you know, right here on page five. Um, and the scene is simple. It's uh, um, Lady Bird fails to convince her mother to let her um, go away to college. Real simple scene, foundation of the whole movie, right? Foundation of the whole movie. That all you would have to write is Lady Bird fails to convince her mom to let her go out of state for college, right? That is not this. I'm not asking you to do that. I don't want what I, I don't want dialogue, right? I don't want I don't want any of that. I just want the I don't want the action. I don't want the dialogue. I just want what the scene is about. It's a foundation for the scene. We'd have Lady Bird. We need the characters in the in the scene. Lady Bird and her mom, right? We need the conflict in the scene. Lady Bird fails to convince her mom to let her go away for college, you know. And this is an interesting way to think about it. Every scene is a beat. Right, a movement up or down in your hero's fortunes, up or down. So it's a, it seems you're usually your hero getting what they want or not getting what they want, a turning point. And in these 30 steps right here that we're talking about, you know, these 30 steps, right? These are major turning points. I'm looking, when I'm looking at your step outline, I'm looking for the major turning points, right? What does a good step do? A good uh, step do, it moves your story forward, right? It moves your story forward. It provides opportunity for exposition to emerge. And this is key. What is exposition? Exposition is the information that we need to know to understand who these characters are, what these characters want, and how they fit into the context of the story. I don't want a scene list that is just exposition. In this scene, we learn that Lady Bird and her mother don't get along. That's not, to me, that's not a great scene. That is, you know, that's you telling me the status of the relationship, right? I'd rather have you say, Lady Bird fails to convince her mother to let her go away to college, right? She jumps out of the car, right? I get all of the exposition in there, right? Now, as I'm gonna say, Later on, in before we get into three act structure, it's okay to start with exposition and then work from there, right? You can say what you think the scene needs to be communicating, but give me an action. Remember, every scene, just like a movie, is an external action, right? And we're looking for this is the step plausible, right? Do they flow from one scene to the other? Is there a connection, right? All of the scenes in this in Clerks, all of the scenes in Lady Bird, there's a flow, there's a, there's a flow, right? Now, what do I want in a scene? What do you include in the scene? This is what I need in the scene in order to see if your scene works. Because in order to, to write a scene, I need a character, I need a conflict, and I need an outcome. The character or characters, Lady Bird and her mother, right? The character in Clerks, Dante and his boss, right? It's a phone call, right? But while you're writing the step, I don't even need this scene as Dante answers the phone, rolls out of bed, he roll, wakes up in the closet, answers the bed, and he's convinced to go in. And he's guaranteed that the boss is going to be there by 2 a.m. by 2. Lady Bird and her mom, they start in the bedroom, they're driving, they're listening to a book on tape. We learn that they've finished their college tour. Lady Bird starts talking about how she would like to get away. And her mom starts saying how irresponsible Lady Bird is, how dangerous, you know, uh, how dangerous it, it would be to leave, um, how much money they don't have. And so she finally shuts Lady Bird down and Lady Bird jumps out of the car, right? All, you know, all a build, all the huge build, right? Um, I need a character or characters, Lady Bird, right? And her mom in, in the Lady Bird movie, Dante and his boss in Clerks, right? I need a conflict. What is the conflict? This is the heart. This is what you got to realize. What you've pitched to me is a conflict. An entire movie is a conflict, right? Lady Bird is trying to go away to college. Dante is trying to decide which relationship to go in the past or to stay in the future, right? It's a conflict. It's a, it's a conflict that a character, as we talked about in your pitch, faces a dilemma, right? So every scene is a microcosm of that. It's a, it's a, it's a character or characters that have a conflict that has a specific outcome, something happens. When you have a character and a, con and a conflict and an outcome, you can write the scene. You can write the scene, Lady Bird fails to convince her mom to let her go away to college. She jumps out the car, right? You can flesh that out four or five page scene. We can see Dante beg his boss. I, you know, I just worked a double last night. You know, I don't care if he's not there. The store and the boss persuades him, makes him promises that he doesn't keep, right? 
You can write that out, but, but you need to think about what is in the scene. This is the optional information in the scene. Exposition that I talked about, why the scene is. This is the scene where we show that Dante is weak character and he can't stand up to anybody. He need, learns how to stand up to make decisions for himself. You can put that in the step, but all I need is Dante convinces Boss to cover his ship, right? The exposition is Lady Bird and her mother, right? Have a very dysfunctional relationship and we're showing that Lady Bird does not you know, does not feel respected by her mother and her mother does not feel highly of the Lady Bird. The arc of that movie is at the end, they're gonna have a very good relationship together, right? One thing that I don't care about in the outline, but if you have it, I'll take it, is where it takes place, right? Dante's boss convinces him to cover a ship. We don't need to know that the boss calls him. It's pretty obvious the boss would call him. He's not gonna show up at the door, right? Um, I don't know that Dante's in his closet in this, this outline. I don't know that exactly in his bedroom. It could, you don't have to say that in the, in the, uh, in the, in the outline, right? But if you know the location, you might as well put it. And one thing I certainly don't want is dialogue. I just want a list of scenes, right? Save the dialogue, save the dialogue. You think I look like I'm from Sacramento. What a great opening line for a movie right? You are from Sacramento. You don't have to do that, making it bad. Well, it's nice. None of this is in Lady Bird fails to convince her mom to go away to college. And look how simple this is, right? It's just dialogue and action, right? Now they're awake, Lady Bird stares, uh, Marion makes the bed, right? You are from Sacramento. It's, it's very simple. When I show you how to write that, it's simple. And that's why I'm going back to, it would be very helpful if you started reading screenplays. And it'd be very helpful if you started reading screenplays that you thought would help you write your screenplay because you will see the form, you will see how dialogue flows and you'll see just about how much action you need to put in it, which is not much, right? Which is not much. That's why for this class, it might seem daunting when I ask you, oh, you're gonna give me 10 pages, then you're gonna give me, you're gonna give me 10 more pages, right? Or, you know, we're, I'm looking for a, something that would be an, an astronomical ask in a class, you know, give me 20 pages of research paper. That's like a graduate seminar. No, there's not much. Once you get an outline done, there's not much. And I'm not asking you to turn in the entire screenplay. We're just gonna write the beginning of the feature, right? Or if it's a short, you're gonna give me the beginning, middle and end of the short, right? Now, as I said, I want you to write a step in a way that implies the conflict and the outcome. Um, this is sunshine. This is the midpoint of Little Miss Sunshine. Dad fails to convince the nurse to let him come back for grandpa's body right? Fails to convince the nurse, right? And so what does he do? He gets the family, they steal dad's body, they get on the road with the body, they go to sunshine, right? The simple, Buzz convinces the crew to find Woody out of, out of Toy Story, right? When Woody's lost, Toy Story 2, right? Buzz convinces the crew, let's go get Woody, right? Let's go get Woody. Um, but it's not, not always characters. This is sometimes people, and, and pause this lecture um, if you're distracted right now, because this is a very important thing that you need to know is that it's not just con scenes aren't just conversations they're not just characters convincing one another again a scene is right what is a scene it's a character conflict and an outcome right so therefore physical actions can be step hero disables guard hero cracks safe friend buzz and friends cross the street you know it's very hard for them to just get across the street New buzz beats up old buzz. Dad and family push start the bus, right? Physical action could be a step. Trying to make it somewhere. Time can be a conflict. If I'm just forced to try to get somewhere and I only have a certain amount of time to get there, that creates pressure, you know? Hanging, trying to pull myself up from a building. If I'm hanging, trying not to follow my depth, that's a conflict, right? So a conflict is not just interaction with characters. Now we want a lot of interaction with characters. That's we see or your, what our heroes want. We see their relationships with others. You can have a lot of that, but remember a physical action, right? An obstacle, significant obstacle, right? And what, what I'm looking for in the, in the outline, when I'm evaluating the outline, as I look at each step, the major question I'm asking as I'm going forward, does it change the situation? If it's the first act, is it setting up? Is it making me care about this character? Is it, is it establishing where we are and who I care about, right? Does it, and what new, what, what new, what have I learned new about this character, right? Does it move the story forward, right? And, and, and most importantly, is there conflict, right? Is there conflict? And if there's not conflict before you might, you're gonna have a scene list that does not 
always have, it's going to be an expositional scene list. And I'm going to ask you, don't give that to me, right? Do some work, do some work on your scene list. Sure. Go ahead and, and tell us the story in ideas for a minimum of 30 scenes. You try to tell us the story, right? And, and try to keep it like in 30, if you can keep it in the 30 to 50 range, it's great. That means we're gonna have a 90 to a two hour movie starting with right because i'm not, i want you to be 90 to 120 pages right that's that's my that's my goal right that's my goal but your i you can start with exposition but i want you to do some work this is the work how well do you know if you can create specific conflicts that show us the reader and eventually the viewer who these characters are what they want their relationships are external conflicts that show not tell then this will translate quickly into a to a screenplay and most importantly your first act needs to be really really solid because the first thing you're going to do when i look at your screenplay well let's say you don't have me you're not taking this class you're just watching this class and i'm not going to actually read the screenplay you get through your story it's important to get through your story because we have to see your character develop change an arc and end right and you try to get it as 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 active as possible meaning the scenes are as active as possible right first act needs to be great because you need to be able to write the first act right second act maybe you have more expositional scenes in the second act and and or the third act because the next assignment after you, i approve of your outline is you're going to try to write your first act you know in, in this in this class right i'm going to ask you to write um, you know, through your inciting incident, and then eventually we're going to try to get through your first act, right? That's the process of writing a screenplay. You get an outline, you get it, you look at the outline, we work on this outline, we create active scenes that you can write in this outline, then we try to write the first act, and we and we have, have we walk, we talk, we do all of this, right? And this is, and it's fun when it's really, a, it's, it's, it's the most pleasurable part of screenwriting is first draft, the first act when characters walk and talk and do what they're doing. But the work that you has to go in first is like I said, the people who don't do the outlines, they write a 40 to 60 page first act, right? A short second act and a third act. And it's like all set up, little complication and resolves. And then I have to go back and I have to say, can you break this down for me and create a step, step outline? Because I'm not going to go through your, you know, 60 page first act your 20 page second act and your um you know 10 page third act and tell you how to expand it i want to see a plan and that's what this is, is a plan it allows me to help you it allows you when i'm not around to help you like do you have the major turning points right I, I've, I've covered this one i'm going to say this again right it's okay to write an expository outline Right, but realize that you know, expository information is not a step. It's not a writable scene. For example, Barnaby is a bad teacher. Right, I've been talking now for forty-five minutes. Right, showing I'm a bad teacher is too broad. Right, there's too many choices. Right, you need to come up with very, something very specific. Right, if you happen to be in the office with me right now and Barnaby fails to convince who insert your name, right? The importance of reading the step of creating a step outline, then you'd be creating an active scene with the two of us that shows that I'm an ineffective screenwriting teacher, right? And be a conflict and you'll go like, I just don't think outlines are necessary. I'll say, look, it's not really an outline. In fact, now I'm gonna use some examples. One of my favorite writers, Larry David, who was a co-creator of Seinfeld, um, who, um, you know, has gone on to do his own show, Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? He only writes outlines, detailed outlines for Curb Your Enthusiasm because the, in the outline is the story. And then he has characters improv the story, right? So in a sense, right, if you happen to have a group of actors who would improv your scenes, they could write your scenes for you, right? They can write your scenes. You don't have that ability. You don't have that ability, but it's evidence that, you really are this is really your story this is really your story right so if we had that scene together and i and i was able to convince you and that if this is a live class you know if we're live class we would do this live and i would like actively try to convince you the importance of writing an outline i would challenge you to tell me why you don't need to write an outline right 
and I should convince you. Therefore, right? Therefore, if I convince you I'm not a bad teacher, I'm a good teacher, but let's say I failed to convince you and I went off on all of these crazy tangents, right? You're showing that I'm a bad teacher. Another way to show that I'm a bad teacher is maybe I don't really care about teaching you how to write an outline. I'm just trying to get through this, right? You can say, Barnaby, you know, you can show that I just, just turn in whatever, I dismiss you, right? I want something specific, right? Barnaby's a bad teacher, Barnaby's a good teacher, right? Um, Barnaby fails to convince a student to write an outline. Right. That's that's sort of my tongue in cheek example. But going from a state like so of circumstances, you know, showing relationship is bad, showing somebody is lonely, right? To an active scene that shows it. Like a, a, a couple arguing over who has to empty a dishwasher or fold laundry can reveal everything you need to know about a relationship very effectively, right? I need you to, and then, and you need to, you need to show, you need to show me that conflict in a, in a list, in a list, a boss convincing someone to go to work, right? A daughter failing to convince mother the importance of going out of state for education completely reveals everything we need to know in that, in that relationship. It makes it easy for you to write, and we have to see that you're writing a movie, you're not writing a novel, right? Um, so conflict, 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 right? And, and the great thing about this is you can always come up with better, a better step, a better step, a better step, a better step, right? You can always come up with a better step, right? So to me, this, what I just covered here is the essential ingredient to see if you have a movie, to see if you can come up with this, to see if you can come up with this. Now, I want to get into, um, uh, more specifics. Um, let me move you guys up here. Um, screenplay structure. And I want to tell you that I'm not making this up. This is the next, the second part of the assignment today is to uh, broadly go over three act structure and where your scenes go, right? Where your scenes go. Now, when I was um, in my 20s, um, which was some time ago, um, I wanted to know, I wanted to know how story worked, why story worked. So when I um, got into a graduate program, um, I wrote a thesis and the thesis was our, and the thesis was to identify essential dramatic principles and to see where they started and where they migrated to. And, and the thesis um, I wrote was that they started way back, way back with Aristotle who wrote the Poetics. And the Poetics is simply um, a book um, that was essentially Aristotle's lecture notes um, that were compiled that analyzed what made great stories of his time work. Aristotle was not a writer. Aristotle, similar, right? To, he was more of a theorist analyzing why stories worked, you know, why Antigone worked, why Oedipus worked. Why did these stories work? Why did these stories work? And he identified um, essential con uh, concepts that, that there was, a, that there was an, a conflict that was unified and told in three parts. And what I did is I essentially took this, and this is what this is, is there is a structure, right? There's a conflict, right? The unified conflict told in three parts. And I traced it all the way from Aristotle to contemporary screenplay theory structure and proved that this structure, a unified dramatic conflict, external conflict told in three parts, always surfaces in the most popular form of entertainment, meaning that in Aristotle's time, it was theater all the way through Shakespeare, Moliere, theater, theater told in three parts, right? An active conflict told, right? With a beginning, middle, and end, beginning, middle, and end. And how it migrated, I found uh, photo play manuals from the silent film era, and the same principles existed in the photo plays and then screenplays. And it ended up with Sid Field, um, who was sort of the pioneer in screen writing books of screen screenwriting, Richard Walter, uh, Lou Hunter, all sort of you know foundation pillars of the UCLA, um, and just read everything there was and boiled it down. Well, I don't 
have, I don't, this is what I had passion for, but I realized that and teaching this class and the reason I'm bringing this up now, I'm sort of went on that sort of, sort of tangent was because what I'm teaching you is nothing that, that you will not find anywhere else. This is common knowledge in the industry that structure is screenwriting, right? And so I took out all of the theater and I'm just leaving it here. I'm just leaving, leaving it for screenwriting, uh, contemporary screenwriting. Um, and, I'm, and I've written a lecture that, that gives you what you, all of this is the more active lecture that I've written, which gives you what you need to consider in each part of the three act structure. This is where your scenes go, your 30 scenes, 30 to 50 scenes go. But, but let me, before I give you this, you know, in, a, in an active way so that you can use it to select the scenes, let me just prove to you that this, these principles and concepts are essential. Right. And that you don't need to go ahead and read everything that I read to know that this is what is essential. And this is what the industry looks at. And we're talking for the most, the more popular, the more people who are going to see the movie, the more closely the story adheres to it. So those of you doing like movies that you imagine being tentpole movies, you know, giant animation movies, movies that are going to be like blockbuster movies will adhere rigidly to this structure at dreamworks you know i this structure on the madagascar movies i've worked with in story panda movies this we do not de deviate from the structure there is no pulp fiction panda right it's all linear beginning middle and end right now the more off the 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 mainstream you get the more you can deviate from this structure it doesn't mean that you don't have to master the structure first. You do have to master the structure first. You master structure. And then if you're gonna be like the Coen brothers did in No Country for Old Men, where we're not quite, quite resolved in the traditional way, you make that choice. You know you're breaking the fundamental principles, right? So I just, before I, before I go through, um, what I want you to consider act by act in the three parts and where your scenes go and how your scenes go and where they should go. Um, I want to sort of go over what others have said, right? Structure is screenwriting. Structure is a very intimidating word for somebody who's a creative, but structure is liberating, right? Structure is a liberating thing. When the scene has a structure to it, right? Every scene has a structure to it. This has a structure to it. Having this structure gives you direction, right? So Sid Field, who was the first to, to be massive in screenwriting seminars on how to, says structure is the most important element of the screenplay. The force that holds everything together, the skeleton, the spine, right? Spine, right? What have we talked about? What is your spine? Your spine is your hook, your hero, and your goal, right? This is the spine, right? The word spine is the foundation. Structure, this is your structure. I've already shown you your structure. Your structure is what your hero wants, what your hero needs to change, and what stands in his or her way. That is your structure, right? So it's not such a bad word, right? The three, Richard Walter, who head of screen, was the head of UCLA screenwriting program, three most important facets of story craft or structure, 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 right? William Goldman wrote Butch Cassidy and Stan Sundance Kid, right? Screenplay structure, it's the spine you hang your story on. When you sit down to write a screenplay, you must approach your story as a whole, right? So it's spine. What I'm showing you is what we all know, right? What we all know. Now, conflict. Your, your spine is the conflict, right? So your idea, as I said, when you pitched your idea, Every idea must promise conflicts. And as Hunter says from UCLA, it's the heart and soul of, of screenwriting. Sid Field says all drama is conflict. Without conflict, there is no action. Without action, there is no character. Without characters, there is no story. No story, no screenplay. Conflict, con conflict for the story, conflict for the scene. Each of these scenes is a little conflict that adds up to this massive conflict. Again, all there. Everybody knows this, right? And it's unified. Every scene here leads to the next scene, right? Your rule at work here is, ah, Aristotle's unity of action, right? This is Hunter. The play should be about one thing and that thing should be what the hero is trying to get. That should sound very familiar to you. The play should be about one thing and the only thing is what the hero is trying to get. That's exactly 
what you're setting up, complicating and resolving, right? Um, that's exactly what it is, right? And I'm not, not gonna, you can continue to read this, but this is just giving you evidence that what I'm teaching you is what you need to know. You need to know this to work in this industry. And it's not me making this up. This is me doing years of research, years working with a studio, teaching this stuff at a studio for 15 plus years, teaching story departments this stuff at a, at a studio for, for 15 years, right? So what do you need to know, right? Beginning, middle, and end. We call it the three-act structure, but there is no curtains that rise up and down, right? I love this, right? The old saying is in the first act, you get your hero up a tree, you create the initial problem. The second act, you throw rocks at, the, at your hero, complicate it. Third act, you get them out of the tree, resolve the problem, right? This is from uh, Thomas Pope, good scripts, bad, bad scripts, right? So three parts, three parts, right? And the three parts are going to be roughly 10 scenes to, you know, you know, 10 to 15 scenes, right? And I'm gonna go, hopefully we're gonna get another 20 scenes and, and at least another 10 scenes, right? Three parts with the middle being bigger, you know, but but if you can go 10, 10 and 10 to start, I, that, that would be fine. I'd be happy with that. I would be happy with that. And we'll get into more specifics as I, as I get into it. You know, what sort of like what I'm looking for, what is enough scenes for the first act? What's enough scenes for the second act, right? But the beginning, the setup, right? What is the setup, right? Who is my central character and what does he want? That is what you're doing for your first 10 to 15 scenes. The goal of act one is to establish the setting, the character situation and the outer motivation of the hero, right? It's the unit of dramatic action that sets up your story. It's the, you know, this is what we're doing. I love how Field breaks this down. First 10 pages, three scenes, we see there's a problem. Something wrong with your hero. Next 10 pages, we define the problem, right? And then we understand the problem, right? Um, so the first act, right? The setup, right? I don't like to say it's just the setup. Setting us up is not enough. We've got to create interest, right? The beginning setup, create, create interest. And this is the problem when you don't do this, you don't have the end and you need to know in your first act that there is a definite end and everybody agrees that agrees that there's a clear end to the to the first act where we're done asking questions right um beginnings end this way all seems right and uh uh right and well fit then in a flash all is wrong and nothing fits and in the middle the complications are played out right the first act right the first act ends at the situation right this is when et meets elliot you know um this is when rick gets the letters to get people out of casablanca right this is there so there's an end to your story i'm going to get to the points right i'm going to get to the points right and i'm not going to read any more quotes but I mean, you can go through these quotes there's the middle this is where we hold our interest right there's a midpoint and the midpoint is where um the story focuses and we focus in on the end of the movie, right? And in the movie, um, Field gets to, he uses ET, you know, and you can see that when this book was written, a little dated, but it still holds up. This is when ET says, we gotta go home. And the whole movie points to how do we get ET home? It's a midpoint, a midpoint is crucial in your second act. It's when everything points to the third act, right? And there's always the, the end, we get to the end. There's this dark part where, your you know hero has learned but it's going to be hard and it gets us into the climax where we satisfy interest right this essentially i've taken you know three or four pages from my thesis and given it to you boil it down um and and you can't read enough about screenwriting you can't hear enough about screenwriting you know there's Take more classes, you know, than just classes with me, right? Read more books. Look at some of these writers who, who I've studied, right? I would recommend that if you're going to read a book, um, you read it's a, it, the book that not only has these concepts, but also has the technical aspects, a book called The Screenwriter's Bible by David Trottier. Um, the book that I recommend that everybody has, right? But in all of these books, the point is these concepts, the three-act story structure, right? None of us get credit for it. Even Aristotle 
doesn't really get credit. I'm not looking for credit, but Aristotle was the first that we know of to identify it. And Aristotle did not publish the poetics, right? Aristotle did not publish the poetics. Aristotle, right, would lecture and talk about this is what stories have in common. There's a conflict, a unified conflict told in three parts, right? And so what I'm trying to do for you today is to take the, what I'm doing and to try to give you practical method to create this, right? So now, now for the, the last part of this lecture today, I want you to actively think about your story. Matter of fact, for now on, whatever, whatever I say, I want you to be thinking about your story. How do you show your story, tell your story? Maybe you start with a tell and then you show. So you've all pitched the story to me. You've all had your synopsis. You all have your characters, right? I want you to be able to take your story now and put it down. I want to get your outline. I want to get your outline, right? And so how do we do that, right? And, I, and I, as I've said, I didn't make any of these three acts structure up, right? And this is what I'm looking for. I want you to create interest, hold interest, satisfy interest. That's the structure of major motion picture, feature, television, short film, create interest, hold interest, satisfy interest, right? And therefore I want you, when you're selecting your scenes, these are your objectives. Your, your objective in act one is really simple. When I finish reading your scenes, your first 10 scenes in act one, I need to know all of this. I need to know what kind of movie this is, who we care about, what they want, and what the major conflict is. Is it a problem, right? Is it a problem? Is it a villain that needs to be overcome, right? And what does the hero need to change about, about themselves in order to accomplish this? Other objectives in your first 10 to 15 scenes, I need to know the rules of the world. Those of you who are uh, um, not working in a world that we readily know, I need to know how the magic happens. I need to know what your kryptonite is. I need to know what your magic is. I need to know all of that. So I need scenes right away that establish this, right? And I need to know the major relationships. I don't need to know necessarily all six characters. You know, we might pick up characters going, going into the second act as we're getting down your literal um, or metaphoric yellow brick road, right? But certainly I need to know the major relationships, right? I need to know the major relationships in your first five to 10 scenes, right? Your first five to 10 scenes. Um, so how many scenes do I want in, in your first act if it's a feature film? I, I'm, I'm hoping that you give me 10, right? Because there's gonna be three movements in each act, right? And we're gonna need, we're gonna need a set, we're gonna need at least three or four scenes in each movement to have your story set up. Have you hooked me? Have you have me grab interest in your story? Number one, the first movement in the first act. And these will be your first one to five scenes. I need to know how it starts. I need to know who your hero is and what the hero's world is like before something interrupts it, right? And as we talked about in your pitch, this is where I need to see what's wrong with your hero. What are the flaws? What is the, what does your hero need to change? Do they change something about themselves? Do they need to escape a world? What is it, right? I need this and I need it in the best possible way, you know? And so you give, you get a, you get a, you get a few scenes, right? And unfortunately, the most important scene in, in the movie is the first scene. Let me rephrase that. The most important, I guess in the movie too, but the most important scene in the screenplay is the first scene. Because if your first scene is really bad, I'm not gonna continue to read, right? So this is why we're gonna outline. What's your best way in? Ah, it's a good way in. We're gonna have someone who's gonna go to work and he's up one day at work and he's gonna blow his entire life. We need to show him very, we need to show Dante's week and he gets, gets convinced to go in and cover a ship. That's a good, that's a good way in, right? So how does it start, right? Don't give me 20 scenes of showing me your character, who your character is and what your character needs. Give me the best scene that shows who your character is and define the key relationships and the key problems your character has. So I what? Relate to your character, empathize with your character, 
relate to your character, empathize with your character. Remember, most of you watching this do not get to have a movie star attached to your story. So if you don't have a movie star attached to your story and we don't, and it's not a story that's developed for somebody, if you have an unlikable character and the character doesn't become likable till deep into your story, and I don't understand who your character is immediately, I might not engage in your story. So this is where you show me why I care about this character, right? If it's funny, make it funny right off the top. Here's the most important um, change. It's the inciting incident, right? There's something that happens in the middle of your first act you know you're going to get five scenes in and something's going to happen phone call from little miss sunshine have to sign the the, the drug pledge in in days and confuse um pregnant in juno right um something happens right that shakes up the world and introduces change all of you should know that now you should write that down type that down what shakes up your world and i like to call the inciting incident it's as 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 i've uh said before it's not a very hooky name um but it's really the beginning of the story this is where your story starts this is where your story starts what is that incident that causes the story to start and remember as we talked about in checking your story there's an often there's some reluctance right? There's reluctance, there's hesitance, right? The world, this is what stops your hero from committing immediately. And this allows us to get to know your character. This is the, the last section for the inciting incident to when your story locks into when your spine locks. You're going to show what about this character is preventing them from committing to the goal, right? Or you're going to show what about this character's world, that inhibits them from committing to this goal, right? What is it? These are the next five or so scenes until something happens, boom, something happens and we're locked in, right? We are locked in, right? We can, the family's convinced to get on the road together and we're gonna go to sunshine, right? Um, I am decided that I'm going to have this child, right? And I am going to, I, this, this scene in Juno outside of the abortion clinic, I'm not going to get this abortion and I, I am going to find parents for this child, right? There's a moment and there's a lock in and all of you should, you should know this and you should think about this now. What causes my story to lock? What causes me to change the narrative from wow, what's going on here? Who are these people? Oh, I kind of like this person. I kind of hate this person. You're asking yourself what is going on. And when it locks in, you want that goal achieved and you're going to ask one question. No more waiting to find out what happens. Now we ask what happens next? What happens next? What happens next? That's all we get. So 10 scenes would be fantastic for your first act. 15 scenes would be okay. I don't want to read 20 scenes in your first act don't want to read 20 scenes you know and then what do you do if you're doing a television pilot right what do you do if you're doing a short film right it's proportionate if a short film if your short film just do the page let's say your short film is a 10 10 pages right you're going to have three to four or five scenes you, you, in a short film you generally get one scene to set set this up you know maybe two but one scene you know you're going to get five pages you know in a uh in a uh um have oh, three pages in a half an hour, uh, one, 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 one to five pages in a half an hour a television show. And a pilot, you're, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get that, that ratio as well. You're going to get, you know, not more than seven, seven to 10 pages to, to set it up. And we, we set it up quickly, but in television, the setup's quicker. Why? Because we know who the characters are. It's, we know that who the characters are. We're finding what the show is about as opposed to who the characters are. This why I feature, it's a little longer for the feature, right? So three movements, show me the character, show me why I care about the character, have, show me what the character needs, give an incident that makes us see that the character needs something dramatic, um, that there's a possibility of your character changing the life, 
show the reluctance. What is it world? Something about that they're, they're insecure. They don't have confidence. Some, someone is preventing them and then have a major incident that launches us into act two, which is the, the most enjoyable part of a movie is act two. Why? Because this is their, this is their yellow brick road. This is the journey, right? And it also has three major parts, right? It has the beginning where we're on the quest, right? And the movements of the second act, there's a new plan, right? We are, we've landed in Oz, we're heading down, the, we are heading down the, the to, to go see the wizard. There's our plan, right? We have the plans, um, this robot has the plans, we just gotta get in the ship, we're gonna fly into the ship, we're gonna drop the plans off, right? Little Miss Sunshine, we're gonna drive the sunshine, we're gonna stop off, we're gonna drop off. Um, I'm gonna make a the book deal on the way, we're all gonna be happy, right? The first section of the second act, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to want 10 to 15 in the second act, right? 10 to 15 for the first half of the second act. So instead of just giving me 10 for the second act, I think minimum of 20, but it'd be great, you know, if you can go 15 and 15. If you go in 10, 15, 15, right? Um, it would be great that we get these scenes that we show the beginning of the quest, right? And in this is where your hero is influenced by it right the teams are built allies are met right there's a scarecrow a tin man a lion we're, we're, we're getting to know who are those people who are going to help your your characters out right who are the allies why are they there right why are they there right we're going to meet randall we're going to see you know we're going to see Brit, uh, silent bob and jay we're going to get all the world's characters in in uh, clerks we're going to see all ladybirds friends we're going to see everybody right but there's going to be something that happens in these first 10 to 15 scenes, it's gonna be a major setback. The witch, whatever your witch is gonna show up, the big thing is gonna happen, a major setback, which is really the no turn back point, right? This new plan is launched, we're on the quest, something happens, and this is one thing, uh, and we'll talk well, when we review principles, um, this is where your stakes rise, your stakes rise, your stakes rise, and your whole second act is about raising the stakes. We talked about this in the previous lectures all there's a good time lock right there's a there's one day there's nine months there's a time lock that's creating pressure right and as the pressure is being you know put upon your hero um your protagonist you know it, you're 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 creating pressure with the time and and it's and as this is happening the stakes always rise always rise and as the stakes rise and the time runs out you create tension and we become more engaged in the story, right? And this is gonna build all the way to the middle of the story. In the middle of the story, as I said with, uh, as I said um, with, uh, um, uh, um, when I was going over the quotes, they give the ET example. It's when ET tells Elliot, I, you gotta go home or he's gonna die, right? This is where, and, and, I, I said this in a previous last, uh, lecture, this is where the, the Russo brothers in the Avengers say, this is where the story shifts, where the hero, the protagonist takes responsibility, right? Stop listening to the other and takes responsibility and becomes about, the whole movie points to the end. It points, this is the whole, everything from now on is about getting to the climax and either achieving the goal or not. There are no more, um, uh, there's no, no more, um, introduction of significant characters, significant choices. It's all about how do I win this fight? How do I get this love? It's all about that. And it, and it propels us into the most important part of the movie. And this is the major test or supreme ordeal, right? This is where your hero must face a critical failure, apparent defeat, huge test, right? Um, that, that, that shows their mettle, that shows that they actually might have what it takes. This is usually the mentors are gone. This is your hero in action by themselves, right? This is where the hero earns the right to face the climax, earns the right. So this is, gonna, this is not one scene. This is getting out of the Death Star. This is getting to and you know, into the witch's castle, right? This is getting to sunshine, as, as we talked about before. This is, this is that significant test. So don't jump in and resolve your movie. And this is, this is what'll happen. This is what, you only give me 10 scenes in your second act. This is really the, the part where 
you you push it for your characters. You push it for your characters. And when you get here, you might be very exposition heavy um, in your first outline that I will review. And I will be okay with that as long as your first act are clear, active scenes with character conflict and outcome. And I see the same going through your second act. If you get mushy, as we say, expositionally in the second half of your second act and the third act, I'm okay with it. But the more specific, the better. And that's, and I'll repeat this again. Being a writer is about making specific choices. And the more specific the choice you make, the more commitment you made to character and their actions, what they're willing to take, the easier it will be to crank out a draft of this, crank out a draft of this, right? And, and this will all lead to a, uh, the second act. There'll be, even though he, your hero is ready, they have, will hit a significant low point. And the reason there's a low point is because the climax is coming. Um, you know, the, 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 even though you have the plans and you know how to maybe defeat your, whatever your literal death star is, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, um, your hero needs to take action, right? Your hero needs to take action, but there is pressure. And we, um, concept that we talked about in previous lecture, we know more than your heroes do. We have the, we have the dramatic irony. We know all the bad things that can happen. We know that the Nazis are coming in Private Ryan. We know that the emperor is facing, has found the rebel base and will blow it up in a certain amount of time. We know that the clock, that the clock has run out in Little Miss Sunshine. We see the pressure, we see the pressure. Um, and you make that clear, you make that clear. Um, so in the, when you get there to the end of the act three, as you get through act two, if you only have 10 scenes in act two and you don't have, you know, 20 scenes, 15, I might be okay with the 20 scenes, right? I will be worried about your screenplay. I will be worried about your screenplay that you haven't tested your character enough. Um, the, the end of a movie is the easiest thing and it should be obvious to everybody what it is. The, the payoff, the hero can, confronts whatever the central conflict is. And remember as in the previous lecture, you're either, hero is either trying to defeat a villain, which will allow him, her, them to get what they need or the trying to solve a problem, like hangover problem, Wizard of Oz problem. And the problem in the climax, the problem, you know, might be, yeah, we get the witch's broom, Oz gets away, but we still have to figure out how we get home, right? Climax is not one scene. It's not two scenes. The climax is the entire friggin' act. And that's one thing that, that people screw up a lot when they're plotting, they're, they, they resolve it too quickly. Now, I don't worry about it um, unless you're like, unless this is a lecture on how to fix a screenplay, you know, a, a rushed climax, man, I've just spent all this time reading this damn screenplay. And if I get to page 90 and the, the screenplay is over by 96, I'm pissed, right? You need to pay off all elements. You know, these 10 scenes need to be hero achieving or not achieving goal. Dramatic need met, hopefully, right? Dramatic need, or if not, then this is tragic, right? The hero learns something, you know, even if the hero doesn't get what he, she, or they want, the fact that the hero learned that what it means to be a father, didn't get the money for the book, all of it didn't win Little Miss Sunshine, but it's better that all that didn't happen. The hero learned, right? Or sometimes you get what you want, right? But to have it all wrap up and, and you need to pay it all off. That's what the third act's about. And it's not one scene, it's not one climactic scene. It's, a, it's a, just a build and it's a continual build, a continual build. Um, often in a problem story, you'll have multiple climaxes. For instance, in The Hangover, we find the real Doug, right? Oh, we, know, we, 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 have the, the, we have the showdown, we get the wrong Doug, we find the real Doug, right? Feels like the movie's over. No, now we got to get home and we got to get married and everybody's got to get the wrap up, right? It's not just blowing up the Death Star. So when you have a problem movie, sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll have multiple, um, multiple steps to conclude. We get the witch's broom, we go to Oz, Oz can't help us, we realize we can help ourselves, right? And lastly, you will need to restore order. And I love to see this 
here, right? I love to see the, the, the difference between the beginning and the end. I'd love to see the difference between your beginning and end of your movie because it'll show me your story's arc. And I want to see your story's arc beginning to end. I want to see your story's arc. Um, so this is just, again, basics on the three act structure, basics on what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for those of you who are writing features, I'm looking for a minimum of 30 scenes that show me your story, you know, that show me your story. Um, whatever, if you're writing a short film, remember that nobody's going to want to watch a short film more than 30, uh, 30 minutes. It's very, nobody's going to watch it. So you just do the math on that. That means 10, 10 scenes is a lot for a short film. Not, not too much, right? I used to say for the short film, um, the difference between a short film and a, uh, actually I'll pull this up for you guys. Um, the difference between a short film and a feature um, is, uh, I'm going to reshare. I'm going I'm to do this for you guys just to put this on here. Um, here we go. Okay. So the difference between the short, and, and I'm going to give an entire lecture on the short film, but because this is a hybrid class, I'm going to just tag this on the end. I'm going to record this and leave it on here. If a feature is 30 to 50 scenes, that's 90 to 105 pages, right? Which, which we're hoping for, right? That's, that's, you know, what most of you are doing. A short can be one scene. You can have a short film that's just one comedic scene, right? One to 10 scene, that's under 30 pages, right? Under 30 pages. What are the primary differences, right? That your first act that we talked about in the feature, your characters are allowed to develop. That's why I want those first five to 10 scenes in the first act, right? To see who the character is, right? The, and then something happens, right? Short film, we don't really get to see a character arc. It's more of what happens to a character. And that's why short films have dual purposes or different purposes in the feature. The feature film is, you're, the reason you're writing a feature film is because you're making me invest in a character in a world and you're showing me the character get into the world, challenge the world and get changed by the world. That's what you're showing me. In the short film, it's more, you're, man, you're, you're not necessarily manipulating us, but we're going through this experience with this character. It's about what happens to this character. There's no time for lengthy exposition, right? Um, there's something, and there's different types of shorts that, that you will be writing. And most of you will be writing a, a short that hopefully is a reveal short. Um, the concept short is something that is a piece of a feature film. It's an idea that we, re, we, we find the, the feature film, and usually it's in the first act, sometimes it's in the second act. But we take a section of a feature film and we turn it into a short that has its own beginning, middle, and end. We manipulate it. A great film to study is a film called Whiplash, right? You look at Whiplash, um, and it's one of the, the coming of age stories that I recommend that you all see. And you see the, the perfectly structured Whiplash, you know, where we see what we see, what our hero wants, and we see who our hero is at the end, right? And there's a, they take a section act, and it's the first, they take a section act, and they create a short film. And in that short film, we just get to see the first significant test where we get to see our, our hero fail as a drummer in front of a class, in front of an audience, right? And it has a great beginning, middle, and end. And the short actually was so good that it won an Oscar, nominated for an Oscar, won an Oscar, um, and uh, was therefore allowed the feature to get greenlit. There have been examples of lots of like um, one of my my favorite um, sort of um, writer director nowadays is someone named Wes Anderson. Um, he did uh, French Dispatch was his latest film. You've probably heard of uh, lots of his films: Fantastic Mr. Fox, Royal Tenenbaums, um, Moonrise Kingdom, etc. Right? He did this. His first uh, feature was sort of a a, a, a small time bad sort of heist film not a bad film funny sort of heist film um and he did a short first to prove that he could do it and then it became bottle rocket and and then it went on from there um and launched a very significant 
career, just like Damien Chazelle's career is continuing to go on with, with the, the whiplash. Some of you might do this, but I would say, if you wanna do a concept short, let's write the feature first. Let's write the feature first. I've actually produced and helped develop several of these. I've produced one um, about a racing, uh, world of racing. We did a concept short um, called American Muscle and got into several festivals, several studios are looking at it. We redeveloped the feature because of it. And, you know, we're working on getting that green lit. I'm, we're currently doing one here at San Jose State um, uh, based on a, 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 a unit, an all Japanese unit that went fought in Germany based on the true story. Um, there's a feature version of the script that was developed. We took the short film out where the son says goodbye to the father in the, in the, uh, um, in the concentration camp or um, um, not the concentration camp, in the uh, Im immigrant camps. Um, and uh, um, then the son goes off and they fight. The sons go off and they fight, right? And it's just concept short that is gonna tell a larger story. Um, I would say that if you, you if that's your goal and you want to be a writer director, let's write the feature first and then come back and do the concept short. The reveal short is um, it's all the short film is is a conflict, right? It's a conflict, and the point of the reveal short is that there's a conflict that's played out, and it's and it's usually a reversal that happens. There's an unexpected um, reversal that happens, and when when I give you this lecture, I will um, I will give you. Um, I will show you two, um, and and if you want to go look at them now, there's one called Locks um, by Ryan Coogler. It was his USC film that allowed him to go ahead and make Fruitvale Station, eventually Creed and Panther. And it's a simple film where um, we expect one thing is happening because of the environment in the world. Um, and we sort of judge this character. And at the end, we realize that, oh, this is not what I thought it was. Um, this is a this is a character who is not um, trying to hide his identity. He's actually shaved his hair off, his locks off to help his his sister. The best analogy is if you've ever seen a film called The Sixth Sense. The whole film we think that uh, that Bruce Willis is trying to help out this kid, and the end we realize that kid's trying to help out Bruce Willis. There's this turn, right? There's this turn, right? That's the best type of short film. And you know, the minimum I want from a short film is a significant conflict that holds holds us and again it's it's not that long you know it's not that long you don't have that much time for the short film and I know there's two or three of you developing a short film um, and I'm going to look at your steps and we're going to see your steps and we're going to see that it's set up quickly it builds and you know something significant happens um, and uh, that's that that concludes the the scene structure lecture I'm going to 